I've always been obsessed with video games. When I was growing up, my parents couldn't tear me away from the TV, whether I was trying to 100% Ocarina of Time, unlocking all the achievements in GoldenEye, or having my friend's Ness destroy me in another round of Smash Brothers. It was also around this time I was introduced to PC games, and as a result, MMOs. A few years later, a friend in my circle would tell our group he planned to play a game called Lineage 2. It was an MMO with castle sieges and PvE and PvP. I degened Lineage 2, and about six months after that, a game called World of Warcraft would launch. We dove into that as well. We all dreamed of the day we'd be adults with enough money to build awesome PCs, have blazing fast internet, and the free will to play games we wanted without worrying about studying for a test the next day or that homework assignment that we were procrastinating on. Fast forward, I graduate, I move out, I get a setup better than I could have dreamed of, and the freedom to play anything I want, anytime I want, only to arrive at a day where I didn't want to play an MMO anymore. I hear this same story echoed by people all the time, and so I thought I'd share the things I did to solve this problem for myself. It worked out for me, and I hope that doing these things will get you to a point where you find yourself looking forward to playing an MMO you love again. So here's six tips to reignite your passion for the MMO genre. Don't be a hamster. Hamster cages are fascinating. We can put a wheel into a hamster cage, and that hamster will get on it and run every day. He's not accomplishing anything, he's not really going anywhere, and if we remove the cage, he'd probably ditch the wheel and explore other parts of the room that the cage is in. The main reason the hamster is only interacting with the wheel is because the cage is keeping him there. MMOs cram their games with hamster wheels. We know them as dailies. Dailies in MMOs are often guilty of being more rewarding than they are fun. It's low effort, recyclable content that the player wouldn't engage with on a daily basis if not for the carrot on the end of the stick. The idea behind dailies is twofold. One is to give us things to do every day. The other is FOMO, get us to feel like we need to log in if only for a moment to get those dailies done. Every MMO has a litany of unfun dailies that we can do, that many feel compelled to do. Dailies are not inherently bad, oftentimes they're even fun, at least until they're not anymore. The problem arrives when we've done these dailies dozens of times, and they've become a job rather than a hobby, when we are doing them because we feel we should, not because we want to. The solution is simple. We need to get off the hamster wheel, branch out and explore the rest of the world in our chosen MMO. MMOs generally have a million things that we can do. Try to make it the point to do the things that you've never done before. Level classes you've never leveled, level trades you've never tried, go to zones you haven't explored yet, and do the quests you've never done. There are always cosmetics or mounts you can earn that you haven't yet earned, achievements that you've not achieved. Try logging in and doing only things you've never done and break free from the loop that you haven't stopped to question. Right now, when you log in, you already know what you're going to do. Rather than logging in and doing the same thing you've done every day for as long as you can remember, do anything else. So often, when I talk to an MMO player, they say, I only have time for my dailies, and then I have to log off. They've turned the MMO into their second job. Why? How did this happen? And how much of this is our fault as the player? This thought process leads us to the next topic. Dare to be inefficient. A lot of MMO players get stuck doing the least fun things in the game each day simply because those things are considered efficient. This happens to a lot of players because if there's one thing that's true of most MMO players, it's that they seek out efficiency, sometimes at the cost of all else. MMO players will min-max the fun right out of the game if given the opportunity. I know, because I'm speaking from experience. This is something that, if we looked back on the days of our MMO journey that we enjoyed the most, we probably weren't doing. We don't look back on our MMO golden years and think about logging in to do our dailies that we'd been doing every day for months. No, they were the golden years because we were doing precisely the opposite. We weren't thinking about what the most efficient use of our time was. We weren't thinking about which dailies we needed to go do before we could go out and actually play the MMO. We were just following our axe, or our sword, or our staff, wherever it took us. Anywhere we hadn't been yet. Anywhere that had something we saw someone else have that we wanted. A lot of times what we were doing in MMOs was fun largely because of what we hoped to be able to do the next day. We were grinding out levels and gear so that we would be qualified to visit the next unknown. The zone that we'd never entered, the mobs that we'd never fought, and the loot that we hadn't seen yet. We weren't logging in to do the same set of dailies we did every day for the last week, month, or year. If we don't have anything to look forward to, if there's no longer something unknown, known over the horizon, if the only thing keeping us logging into the game is dailies for the sake of efficiency, it might be time to accept that we've become the hamster on the wheel. We're treating our MMO like there's a cage keeping us on this wheel. We're treating our MMO like it's a job. Except our boss isn't paying us, we're paying our boss. We've entered the final stage in any MMO player's career. We're logging in to do dailies, and then we're logging out. We stopped looking forward to these dailies a long time ago, but they never stopped being efficient, so we kept doing them. 
Maybe we've done everything we wanted to in our current MMO. Maybe there's nothing unknown left that appeals to us, and dailies are the only thing easy enough to knock out in a game we don't have the motivation to actually play anymore. We are probably burned out on our MMO. Whether it is good or not doesn't matter. It's like listening to your favorite song until it's played out. At some point, you don't want to listen to it anymore. The song isn't all of a sudden bad. You just heard it too many times. When we burn out on our favorite song or our favorite meal, the next time we choose a different one, why do we think MMOs would be any different? So perhaps it's time to acknowledge that you don't look forward to logging in and acknowledge that there is no cage forcing you to get on the same hamster wheel every day simply for the sake of efficiency. If we have a ton of currency in our MMO, but we don't enjoy spending it, does it matter? And this leads us to our next point. But first, a word from our sponsor. Call of Dragons takes place in an immersive, epic fantasy world. You can train behemoths with your alliance and unleash them as your secret weapon. Level up your heroes with unique skills that can turn the tide of battle in an instant. Pair heroes with complementary skills together and deploy them in battle to own the battlefield. You can even put your roster of heroes alongside other allied players' forces and unleash artifact skills for an even bigger battlefield boost. The game also features true 3D terrain that shapes gameplay. Melee and range units mean more battlefield freedom. You can even take to the skies with flying units. There are many ways to fight, including PvP, GVE, and GVG. Deploy up to five legions to build truly huge battles with automatic healing so that you can fight without fear. Call of Dragons features classic 4X gameplay, now better than ever. You can zoom in and out of a huge seamless map. Call of Dragons comes from the creators of Rise of Kingdoms. The development team has a wealth of experience in creating in-depth strategy games, helping to make Call of Dragons truly amazing. So be sure to experience this high quality game with cinematic graphics and a huge talented voiceover cast. Download Call of Dragons now using my link in the description and start your adventure today. Thanks for listening and now let's get back to the video. MMOs are a game, not a marriage. Right now there are more MMOs with millions of players than any time before. If someone is looking for an MMO today, they have more quality options than ever. Perhaps make it a point to try new MMOs. Try to understand why some of the more popular ones have millions of players playing them. Give those MMOs a chance. The hamster wheel you're on will still be there if you ever want to go back. It's been there for years and it will still be there in the same spot doing the same thing for years to come. But if we don't get off the hamster wheel for a while, that MMO will never be fun again. MMO players are some of the most tribalist communities on the internet. Oftentimes all they know is they love their MMO and they hate every other other MMO. They don't even need to play the other MMOs to know they hate them. They just know. These same players log into the MMO they love and feel unmotivated. In other words, they're bored. And yet they log into their MMO and not any of the other ones because in their minds, their MMO is the best MMO. And maybe it is the best MMO or not, but it doesn't matter because of the way humans are built. Sometimes new is better than best. Eventually we get bored of the best. We get numb to the best because we've already experienced the best too many times. The thrill of victory isn't there the 50th time you clear the dungeon. Collecting the 500th pet just isn't as exciting as when you collected the first. You'll probably look at the pet as you unlock it, maybe even smile, and probably never look at it again. MMOs definitely suffer from declining returns on our time investment. The longer we play an MMO, the less rewarding every minute we play is. As a direct result, the less fun it becomes. The 200th mount is seldom as rewarding as the first. The same is said for the 200th cosmetic or the 200th quest. And there isn't an easy solution to this. MMO bloat is a thing, and it's a real problem for the genre. Games were never meant to be forever, and yet with the MMO genre, some of us are trying to make them so. We get to a point where the fact that we have so much accomplished in an MMO is what's keeping us there, but it's also exactly why we don't get excited about accomplishing more. We've become numb to it. It's a sword that is cutting both ways. But what if I told you we didn't have to break up with the MMO to enjoy another? What if I told you that we could play more than one MMO at once? What if I told you that we could play as many MMOs as we wanted? We are not married to our MMO. We don't need to hate other MMOs. We don't need to get upset with people who dare to enjoy other MMOs. They're not cheating on our MMO. Our MMO is little more than a corporate machine built to extract money from us and hopefully entertain us in the process. Our MMO does not care about us. It is not our partner, and it would likely replace us with someone that is willing to spend more money on it in a heartbeat if it could. And if we look at the cash shops in a lot of MMOs these days, we see that many of them have done exactly that. Someday, the MMO we can't separate ourselves from will shut down. The servers will turn off and everything we've accomplished will disappear. It's a game, not a marriage. Go see other MMOs, live your best life, experience the best those MMOs have to offer, and then leave when you arrive at the hamster wheel. You know what it looks like by now. You've seen it before. There is no shame in walking away from the hamster wheel this time, only wisdom. When all that's left are dailies, and most importantly, when you're no longer having fun, close the MMO and move on to the next one, or back to the one that you were taking a break from. The hard truth is that the first month in a good MMO 
is more fun than the 50th month in the perfect MMO. Take a chance on a new MMO. After all, that's how you found your favorite MMO in the first place. As they say, variety is the spice of life. This next one is easier said than done, but it's also an incredibly important one for a lot of people. Make friends in the MMOs you play. Now, if you do find the energy and the courage to venture into a brand new MMO, there's a lot of hurdles. You go from being the wise veteran to the know-nothing noob. It can be jarring, but try to revel in the unknown. It's what motivated you once upon a time, back in your MMO glory days. Every piece of loot you find is once again a potential upgrade. Every cosmetic you unlock is way better than what you're wearing. There is so much you haven't done yet. Focus on all of these types of positives, rather than the stress that comes with figuring out a new MMO. You will learn it in time, and only as fast as you want to. For some, the hardest part of leaving an MMO will be leaving a social circle. Now, many of you will say, what social circle? My guild died ages ago. Many of you are nearly all that's left of your social circle. And whether you realize it or not, that's a large part of why you aren't having as much fun in your MMO anymore. Maybe you're like me. You still love MMOs and you still try them, but few, if any, of your real life friends play them anymore. My real life friends fell in love with other genres or met partners who didn't game and had to cut back their gaming time. Some had kids, all have jobs, and I'm all that's left except for one friend who plays WoW Classic and only WoW Classic. Power to him. But MMOs are best enjoyed with others. The camaraderie means more than we admit to ourselves. Unlocking a rare mount feels so much more rewarding when we can share it with our friends. Whereas unlocking a rare mount or cosmetic and having no one to share it with is quickly forgotten. It doesn't end up being a memory we cherish in the same way. If this is you, you have to approach MMOs differently. If you want to get from them today what you got from them in the past, you need to put yourself out there. Terrifying, I know, but you should join a guild and make friends if your best MMO memories included being in a guild and having friends. You can't find these experiences again without first finding a guild or a group of people to have those experiences with. It's easy to feel like we're uniquely awkward or uniquely antisocial or uniquely quiet. I hate to break it to you, but we MMO players don't abstain from the real world to live inside of virtual worlds all day because we are extroverted social butterflies. We are all a lot more alike than we give ourselves credit for, and there are people today experiencing their MMO golden year right now. They are playing their first MMO. They are excited and exhilarated to log in and play every day. Join a guild of people with this positive mindset. Look for people who are having fun and who still enjoy the genre and have fun with them. Just like you were once in love with an MMO and couldn't stop playing it, there are people going through that exact experience right now for the first time in an MMO that you haven't played yet. Some of them are starting that MMO today. Join up with them, make friends, and have those friends that are online every time you log in. Have friends that are BSing in the Discord voice chat every night when you get home from work or when you roll out of bed in the morning. These guilds exist all over. They are full of people exactly like you. People whose favorite thing is to play an MMO they enjoy. People who love the camaraderie MMOs provide in-game or in Discord without having to leave their house. This is still happening, but perhaps we stopped looking for it because we already had it once. We had the guilds, we had the circle of friends, and so we stopped looking for more. But as that slowly eroded, as those people slowly moved on, we find ourselves feeling alone. The only people that remain are other hands hamsters logging in to do the same dailies alone that you yourself are logging in to do alone. We forgot to look for a new circle to replace the old one when it died. If that circle of people was a large part of why you enjoyed the genre before, it's up to you to find a new circle so that you can enjoy the genre that way again. The perfect guild for you is out there. You just gotta be willing to look for it. Now let's talk about the meta. A topic I hear thrown around a lot is that the meta has ruined MMOs for people. They miss the days when there wasn't one where everyone was exploring things for the first time without knowing the answers, before evil content creators ruin the genre by sharing their knowledge of the games they play. But it's worth noting that a world without metas still exists in many forms. The first is in new MMO launches. Every time a new MMO comes out, it's a glorious mess. No one knows which skills are good, which builds are good, which classes are good. Even the content creators are just putting together best guesses based on constantly changing variables from a wildly turbulent beta. What's the best way to kill the dungeon boss? No one knows. Or maybe the one guy in the group finally beat it last night and he shares it with the group. Yes, some of this is lost during extensive betas, but not nearly as much as you would think. Most people that play MMOs don't research information from the beta before they start playing. I have had this exact experience with every new MMO that has launched, and it's been a blast. But that's because I don't look at MMOs as marriage. I don't expect an MMO to be the last game I ever play, and so I'm never disappointed when I eventually leave it to play another game. If you break that mentality that MMOs are marriage and instead look at new MMOs, 
MMOs as crazy new adventures unspoiled by metas that haven't arrived yet, you might find that you have a great time with new MMO launches. In my opinion, MMO launches are often the funnest times to play an MMO. Everyone is picking the abilities that sound fun or look cool. Everyone is brand new. There's an energy and a buzz in the community that you never feel again after the launch. Yeah, there's going to be bugs and someone always figures out how to dupe. And sure, that will be annoying in the moment, but for those annoyances, you get at least a month of that sweet, no meta MMO experience unrivaled by any other moment in that MMO's life. If you feel like the meta is ruining MMOs for you, but you're not playing new MMOs when they launch, you might be the thing that's preventing you from enjoying the genre. Now, many of you are watching this video because you're not enjoying your MMO anymore. Whether you realize it or not, you are burned out on your all time favorite MMO. That's why you're not enjoying it anymore. You need something that isn't that, which means you need to give other MMOs a chance. More specifically, you need to give an MMO that isn't a clone of your MMO a chance. Rather than asking yourself if an MMO is good enough to play for five years, ask if it's good enough to play for five weeks. The first five weeks are always some of the most fun because everything is new. It's unknown. The levels and progression are coming at a reasonable rate. You don't know what's around every corner yet. You don't know what the next zone looks like. The only way to get that feeling is to seek it out and to be open minded about playing something new. If you're not used to trying new MMOs, they can feel like your first sip of beer or coffee or tea when you were young. They might seem awful at first because they're so different from what you're used to, but over time you start to appreciate them for being different. And before you know it, it's a familiar taste that you even crave. Now it's time for another hard pill for us to swallow. There's another way to avoid the meta. We don't have to play a brand new MMO to avoid the meta. We can play any MMO without following the meta. What? You think you're the only person who doesn't want to Google how to take down the last boss in a dungeon before you run it? Not only are you not the only person that feels this way, you are everywhere. I know this for a fact because I queue into groups full of you every time I pug a trial or a dungeon in any MMO. They are full of people with non-meta builds doing non-meta levels of damage with no idea what the mechanics are or what they should be doing. Sometimes I'm one of these people, focusing first on having a good time and second on optimizing the fun out of my build. We are the arbiters of our destiny in this regard. We can choose to spoil ourselves by looking up the best way to beat that story boss, looking up the best build, or we can choose to go in blind and figure it out ourselves. But whatever you do, don't Google a guide and then say the meta is ruining the genre. That's like shooting your tire and then complaining that it's flat. There's always someone else out there that's willing to go through the content blind. We know because they are always in our groups in every MMO we play, standing in the red, failing mechanics they didn't research in advance, and using a loadout that's far from optimal. They are everywhere, and they aren't hard to find. So if metas are ruining MMOs for you, next time you run into one of these people, add them as a friend. Join their guild, or make your own guild and invite them. Tell them that you love that they are forging their own path through the game, stay positive, and relish in the non-meta. Find a group of like-minded people to enjoy the game with so that you're not berated for not serving the meta gods. This topic is so much more in our hands than we might want to admit, because we're far from being the only people to feel this way. We've got two options to escape the meta. We either put in the tiniest amount of effort to connect with people like us, or we play an MMO launch where nobody knows anything. This last one is probably a topic that a lot of people fall into. The old, it's not them, it's you. I talk to a lot of people who come into my stream or comment on my YouTube videos and ask me, Hey Lucky, what MMO should I play, man? I've tried every major MMO and none of them are fun. I've played like 10 MMOs in the last two months. I hate all of them. And my response is, so you tried every major MMO with millions of players each and you found no joy in any of them. Well, the bad news is that means it's not them, it's you. It sounds like you're burnt out on the genre. If you've been playing MMOs for the last five or 10 or 20 years, you may just need to take a break and give another genre a chance for a bit. Every MMO is different, but also every MMO is a lot the same. There's a very visible thread that ties them all together. And once you realize that there are only a few types of quests in every MMO, you see why it's so easy to burn out on not just one of them, but all of them. Every quest in every MMO is little more than one of these three things. Go talk to person A or kill monster Y or collect object X. That's it. Talk, kill, collect. The MMO formula in a nutshell. And it is very much possible to get numb to that formula if you don't find ways to deviate from it enough, either by playing completely different genres or MMOs that are so different from one another that they almost feel like a different genre. But eventually the formula can become stale and eventually we all need a palate cleanser. If you still love gear progression, inventory and exploration, maybe try survival games. If you miss how hard MMOs used to feel and feel like everything is too easy now, play some Souls-likes to experience the thrill of victory again. If you enjoy the story and the lore in 
MMOs, maybe finally give those story-driven RPGs everyone's been raving about a chance. Last of Us, God of War, The Witcher, Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy. If you love looting things, try the most popular RPGs like Diablo 2, 3, and soon to be 4. Try Path of Exile, try Grim Dawn, or Last Epoch. Every day, MMO players try games like these for the first time and find out that they absolutely love them. Then they play them until one day, a ways down the road, they start to burn out on their palate cleanser. The MMO that they used to play sounds a little more fun with each passing day until one day it finally sounds more fun than the game that they're playing. Their palate has finally been cleansed and MMOs are fun again. If your favorite genre is the MMO genre and it's the only thing you love to play, but you can't seem to enjoy any MMO you try, it's likely the best thing you can do to regain your love for the genre is to turn your back on it for a while. As they say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's true of MMOs as it is of love. But be warned, sometimes that absence also gives us clarity. The distance to see that we weren't enjoying the MMO anymore and that we don't want to go back. Sometimes we are only one break from quitting an MMO forever, and that's okay. If that's the case, it's because we are having more fun playing something else. Maybe another MMO, or maybe anything else entirely. Now for my final thoughts. I think for most people watching this video, the solution is going to be some combination of these answers. Most are hesitant to try new MMOs, and many of those that do try new MMOs don't enjoy them because they aren't burnt out on one specific MMO, they are burnt out on the MMO formula as a whole. For others, the thing they miss isn't provided by the MMO at all, they miss the social interaction and the experiences that being in an active guild provide. But there are thousands of active guilds in every MMO, we just have to find them. We put ourselves out there and joined an active guild back in our glory days. What's stopping us from doing that today? If you were to self-diagnose, which one of these things would you say is the problem for you? Or is it something completely different? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. This video was very cathartic for me as I've got thousands of hours in the genre. It's literally my job to play MMOs day in and day out. Taking a break isn't really an option at the moment. It's been a double-edged sword as it's forced me to put more hours into the genre than I normally would have, but it's also forced me to go out and experience more MMOs than I normally would have. Branching out and diving into every new MMO launch and every great MMO expansion, regardless of the MMO, has reinvigorated my love for the genre. As soon as I finish an expansion and I log in to see the treadmill of dailies waiting for me, I usually move on to the next MMO. There really are a lot of great MMO options out there right now if you give them a chance. And if you already tried them and hated all of them, it becomes a it's not us, it's you type of situation. It's not that every MMO in the world is simultaneously bad and that millions of people enjoying them are all just wrong it's likely you are in a place where you can't enjoy them, either due to burnout or responsibilities that you didn't used to have like family and children. Maybe your life doesn't afford you the time to play MMOs in a way that you enjoy without making you feel guilty about it. And that guilt can put so much pressure on the experience, it can cause you to feel like your hobby is a waste of time. But remind yourself that hobbies are meant to be that time in your life where the sole purpose is to enjoy your time, not be productive with it. Give yourself permission to enjoy your hobby. You've earned it. Try to remember that. Hopefully one of the items on this list helps you regain your love for the genre. What do you feel is preventing you from enjoying MMOs? Have you done anything that worked? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you ever feel like shooting the breeze about MMOs rather than playing them, swing by my stream over at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost. I'm probably there talking about MMOs right now and I'd love to talk to you about it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more MMO content and leave a comment down below for the algorithm. Massive shout out to my YouTube members for supporting the channel in the big way that you do. To become a YouTube member, for access to behind the scenes footage, a private Discord channel, and more, hit the join button below. Sincerely, thank you for watching. And if you're not sure what to do next, maybe check out one of the videos popping up on screen right now.